Hey, this is Joe from Vincent von Beethoven. I'm here promoting the release of my new record, Needle and Thread. It's coming out later this year. I wanted to take a minute today and share with you how I put together one of my tracks. This is the first single off my album. It's titled Here We Go. One thing you got to keep in mind about this track. The whole thing was composed as a sort of floral bouquet. All right, so let's get started. First thing I want to show you is what instruments did I use to create this song? How did I use them together? How did I use them to create transitions and interest and texture and music? The whole thing actually started with this little figure. So I used the keyboard in a number of different ways throughout the track. Um, here's what it sounds like at the A section. Here's what it sounds like at the B section. And structurally, the song comes back to A. Okay, what's next? Synthesizers. I've got Mellotron strings. I've got a few synthesizers here, a brassy sound, a sweepy synth sound, um, and ooh, this one. At the repeat of the verse, I've got these sounds coming in together to add some interest to the track and kind of open it up a little bit. Here's what it sounds like. context. Synthesizers. In the B section, there's another sound. Arpeggios. Arpeggiators. 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 They just keep going and going. Did I mention the arpeggiator? Here's my thinking about synthesizers in the context of this track. With all of the synth sounds, I doubled them and panned them wide and pushed them back in the composition by using reverb. Here's what it sounds like with the reverb and without. Here it is with. Wait, hold on, did you say arpeggiator? And here at the end of the track, I use the synthesizers as a way to sort of depart from the song and say, the song's over. Wasn't that awesome? Moving on, we have a classical guitar sound with a little bit of an effect, doubled, panned wide, it's doubling the piano part. And here are some plucky arpeggiated parts. It's an easy way to add a bit of play and spontaneity and fun uh, to any track. So of course I had to add it to this track. Anywho, can't have music without bass these days, so here's the bass. Doing what bass does providing harmonic and rhythmic support. All right, give me some rhythm. What do we got here? But first, before I dive in, I cannot tell you how much time and energy I put into finding 
listening to, playing drum sounds, drum machines, until I found this sound. Can't have spacey drum sounds without some space. There it is. Okay, so what is it? What's it doing? Um, it's a simple beat. In the A section, it's more open. I use the toms to create little fills, little moments. The B section is more subdivided. What does subdivision do? It creates movement. It creates excitement. It creates interest, texture. How did I do that? I turned the hi-hat on. Easy. That's music. Here's a pro tip. Sometimes not having drums at all is just as important as having drums. Here's the end of the B section. Listen to how I don't use the drums. Here we go. You and me. Me and you. It would have been totally inappropriate if I would have used the drums right there. So when is it appropriate in music to use or not use an instrument? Well, if your drum machine is going to plow through the most important part of the song, which happens to be a vocal part, you better hit the mute button. And then you can go ahead and unmute it later. Take my name Here's what it sounds like in context. Heart. By choosing when and when not to use any element in a composition, you can create interest and movement, and you can draw attention to what's important. The last part that I recorded, which is pretty common in production, is the vocal part. It sounds like this. Take my name and take my I use the real ADT plugin to create a vocal double sound without actually doubling the vocal, which gives it that kind of chorusy, phasey sound. There's also this backup vocal part in the B section, which sounds like this. That it Again, reverb. I could say a whole lot more about recording vocals in general, but in the context of this song, I wanted to keep it simple. Lastly, at least where the orchestration is concerned, how can you have a song about love and flowers without bird sounds, in my opinion? Okay, so those are all the parts, but how did I put them together? Uh, what does it mean? What's it about? Oh, and mixing. I could talk a lot about mixing. There's lots of YouTubes about people talking about mixing. I'm not going to talk too much about people talking about mixing, and I'm not going to spend too much time talking about mixing myself. Here's my session. I'll just let you see. Just sort of cursory here. There's not a whole lot going on except for faders, EQs, compressors. So there you go. Anyway, that's what I was going for. Um, basic, simple. How did I do it? Layers, textures, varying rhythmic complexity, uh, Consonant, harmonies, simple, melody, uh, interesting sounds, a blend of sounds. That's about it. So thanks for listening. Uh, things of importance. 
This track was mastered by Greg Ryerson at Rareform Mastering, along with the rest of the album, which will be coming out later this year, as I said. Um, in the meantime, please follow me on Facebook. I'm trying to post some interesting content on there, more about the album, more about the tracks between now and then. So, thank you.